when you first start making video games, you're warned against diving into developing your dream game. This is because the scope of your dream is way too big, even for some of the best studios, and when you're starting off, you just don't have the skills for it. You're also warned against developing your own game engine. This is because game engines can have a huge scope, require a lot of technical know-how, and there are plenty of pre-established engines that are far more beginner-friendly for building up your skills, such as Godot, Unreal, and Unity. After you've been making games for a while, you become a competent developer. You've got a good skill set, and whatever idea comes to mind, you feel you've got a pretty good shot at making it. You may even take a crack at that dream game you've always wanted to make, but for most people it's always in that game engine that they first used. How much thought did you put into choosing that game engine? Have you ever tried other game engines? And what's stopping you from making your own game engine? Perhaps each of these questions deserve a video in their own right, but as a game engine developer, I really want to focus on that last point. What stops you from making your own game engine? Well, I've been asking around, and I feel there are a lot of misconceptions about game engine development. Far too many people avoid it for four main reasons. These are getting into the right mindset, the time it takes to develop the engine, the technical know-how needed for the engine, and the comparisons against pre-established engines and their games. There are valid concerns for each of these areas, but I hope to persuade you they are far less off-putting than you may think. Let's start by getting into the right mindset. I see a lot of people that are in awe when someone makes their own game engine, and they say things like, I can never do that. I think this stems from when you first start to make games, because you're told to avoid making game engines. There's never a point where someone turns to you and says, you can make a game engine now. Besides, you only ever wanted to make games in the first place. This is another mindset that puts people off game engine development. The belief that only the most hardcore technical wizards are going to try making a game engine, but for you it's not worth the time and effort, because you just want to make games. You might not even learn how to make art or sound, as you can just get that stuff from the store. But by far the biggest hurdle you have to come across is the idea of starting again. You know how to use your preferred engine and can make pretty complex games. Having to step away from that, scale down your game scope to almost beginner levels, and then add on learning how to maintain an engine is not easy. Then again, if you're going to switch engines anyway, then it's not that much more effort. This is why I made sure getting into the right mindset was the first topic I talked about. Not everyone's going to give it a go, because you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. You may be able to make more games if you stay there, but you'll grow significantly more as a developer if you get out of it. Just ask yourself this, what do you want from your career as a developer? And how can you get into the right mindset to achieve that? Now we're in the right mindset, let's take a look at the other concerns people have with making their own game engine. First, the amount of time it takes to create a game engine. There's a lot of concern that making a game engine takes a huge amount of time that eats into your game's development schedule. Whilst it does take time, I think it's significantly less than most people assume. This is because people see large features in pre-established game engines and assume they'd have to recreate all of them, but the reality is, it just depends on the requirements for the games you want to make with the engine. I also think many people assume they have to sit and make the engine, and then make the games in the engine. This is not the case. Much like when you first learn how to make games, you can start off small and build up your feature set as you make more games. For example, say you start with a Flappy Bird clone. You only need three features, sprite rendering, input and collision. These are a fantastic base for any game in your engine, and once you've got them you can move on to your next game, say an arcade shooter in which you add a particle system to create bullet effects. Then you move on to an RPG where you create a level editor, a platformer with physics, maybe a tower defense game with pathfinding. The more games you make with your engine, the more features your engine gets, and the more features your engine gets, the better your engine's games can be. You can really build up momentum if you follow this approach. Next, I want to talk about technical know-how. This is a major concern, especially for those making their first game engines, because game engines can have a lot of complex features, and from the outside can seem really complicated. Some people think it requires entering the matrix, having a complete understanding of memory management, and an intricate knowledge of low-level programming to create the most efficient engine. But like we discussed with time, it all depends on the requirements your games have. Why bother creating all of that when something simpler works? and perhaps making that simple system gives you a better understanding of how to improve it in the future. For me, I say if you can code a game, you can code a game engine. It's the same set of skills, just applied to different problems. 
For example, let's have a look at a common performance improvement in games and a common performance improvement in game engines. First, games that spawn a lot of objects often use a technique called object pooling. This is when a number of objects are kept loaded, even if they aren't being used, because having to load and unload the objects into memory causes the game to lag. Similarly, game engines that contain a lot of objects that collide often use a technique called quad trees. This is a data structure that stores objects based on their location so that collisions are only checked for nearby objects. Both of these solutions solve their respective problems by managing where items are stored in memory. If you know how one of these work, then you'll be able to understand how the other works. The more you do this, the more you realize game engines aren't as complicated as you may think. The last point I want to make is the comparison against pre-established game engines and the games made with them. It's easy to see what developers are making with other engines and feel left out, especially when your games are compared against theirs. I distinctly remember many of my early games getting comments about adding simple juicy features such as particle systems and camera shake, but I just couldn't add them at that point in my game development journey. You've got to remember where you are and where other game engines are. Most pre-established engines have been around for at least a decade, maybe two, so they've got a head start on you, but you don't have to compete with them. In fact, I recommend using them as inspiration. I often use different engines during game jams to test them out. That gives me an idea of what they do well and reminds me that they are not perfect, as I also get an idea of what to avoid. If you do that right, you may even find that your engine is better for you, as it suits your exact needs. Plus you get the added benefit of ownership. No more hassle when it comes to royalty or installation fees. And yes, you might not have them with open source projects, but if you've got an understanding of how to make a game engine, then you've got the ability to contribute to those projects yourself. Either way, whether it's continuing with your own game engine, contributing to open source projects, or going back to pre-established game engines, you'll be in a much better position if you give it a try. So I'll ask again, what's stopping you from making your own game engine? Let me know in the comments below, and perhaps one day you'll give it a go. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, leave a like to let me know you did, and subscribe for more great game development content, like this devlog explaining player input in my museum management game. Thanks for watching, goodbye.